It has been snowing for almost five days now here in Denmark and the temperatures has been below zero degrees Celsius all the time. I'm now in the forest to photograph some of these beautiful patterns and try to get some video of the snow coming down uh, through the treetops. But uh, right now I'm just waiting because all my gear is very warm and as you can probably see uh, the snow hits and melts and that makes it almost impossible when it's like swirling around like even in the in the lens hood it gets in and like melts on the front element of the lens so what i'm doing now is just taking a little time just to let the all the gear that uh, lumix gh5 and the tamron here and the nikon let all this gear just come below zero degrees Celsius and that means that then I can dry it off and when the snow then hits it'll just like uh, bounce on it uh, without like stick to the to the glass so yeah I'll just give it a little time and enjoy the scenery and then let's do some photography Look at this landscape behind me. This is what I'm here to photograph today. It's like there's so much powder snow in the air. So it's like the landscape just disappear. Um, like look how the trees in the foreground, they're like well defined with the green colors. But then as we go further, it just disappears into some kind of mist. It's, uh, it's, I've lived here in this area for five years and this is so rare. It's one of the few times I've actually experienced five days with snow every day and like more than two weeks with constantly uh, temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. So I'm going to photograph this and try to see if I can make like some pictures that just kind of shows what I'm actually seeing now. One thing I like when I'm doing landscape photography and I have the camera on my tripod is to use the live view mode because it kind of takes the 3D world and put it into a two-dimensional uh, preview here on my screen. And for me, it's like, I feel it's much easier to see the, the lines and the, like the, the composition. And it also makes it easier for me to make like small adjustments. So I can like here, let me just adjust my tripod. I like these two green threes in the side just to kind of like close the edges just like this. Let's try to make a picture. So as we zoom out, this is the beauty of having a zoom because kind of want a little of the foreground just to give it a little depth let's try again I have my EF on button here is to uh, lock the autofocus so it doesn't affect see and the histogram looks pretty nice might make it a slightly bit darker just to see I'm going down with the ISO just two-thirds of a stop and then, yeah, let's try focus on that tree. And then I lock the autofocus with the thumb here. I've put my AF on button to that. Let's try. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. It has started to snow again. And uh, it just adds to the picture. I hope I can get these uh, little snowflakes frozen. So. Before it was snowing, I was using like a 50 of a second and a aperture 8 to get a little depth of field. And uh, I'm on ISO 160. But uh, because of the snow, I want to go all the way up. Because I'm using now, I'm at uh, almost 600. I might go down to, 
see yeah, around 450 and then I go with my shutter speed I go all the way up to like 640 because I think with that focal length I can almost freeze these uh, small snowflakes with the his on the histogram I have a little bit on, on each side so like quite a lot on each side because the contrast is so low now so that means like I'll probably overexposure one more stop to get the the white snow exactly where I wanted but yeah like I know there's an one of my favorite trees is down there. It's an old uh, oak tree, and I want to go there and see how that looks like in this weather. Okay, so. I know uh, this is a landscape trip, but plan has changed a little bit because of this. Look at this. These are fox tracks. And they're going right in there. Just for a little bit, maybe maybe just 20 minutes I want to follow these tracks because I can see they're fresh because some of my tracks over here are older now than the fox tracks so um, yeah and then I think the trees and the beautiful landscapes will still be here when I'm done with the fox and I'm not going to make the same as with the musk oxen where I stayed the whole day with the musk oxen instead of doing landscape because this opportunity for the beautiful patterns is just too nice but I just feel that I have to follow and just to see if I can get a glimpse of, of uh, Mr. Fox. the wind and the snow makes it harder for him to hear that I'm actually here so I might be lucky it's just about the challenge now is to see him before he sees me one big advantage now and that's the tracks in the snow the tracks now disappear into this easy for a fox but not so easy for a tall photographer but Let's go. So, uh, I've been walking around for uh, for like a long time now, uh, following these fox tracks, and then out there, they just uh, disappeared in the because there was a lot of snow and a lot of wind. So even though they seemed quite fresh, they have just been washed out by the, by the snow. So now I've decided to uh, go back and like follow the tracks the other way because they went into the forest. And uh, I just like, I just really, really want to uh, find out where this fox goes, like find his, uh, his behavior. Uh, because that means that like knowing what the animal does and uh, animals like foxes has like kind of a routine so very often they'll follow the same path uh, when they go hunting and that is like invaluable for me because I can then sit down there maybe set up a, a natural blind and just sit and wait in the early mornings late evenings and just wait for him to come you know alongside the, the path sniffing for the mice and stuff and I could be sitting there with my camera and just get to some awesome time so yeah just before I go back to landscape photography I want to uh, I want to see if I can find the the fantastic mix Mr. Fox here in the Danish forest I'm still following the fox tracks now in this like little forest 
I'm just giving five more minutes after the tracks. Let's go. I managed to get myself away from the fox tracks, uh, basically because they, they went into a really, really dense forest. And I decided that was like a natural way for me to get back uh, to do this. The camera is on the tripod and I'm making photo of this beautiful pine tree with the snow like so heavy on all the, the branches. But uh, yeah, let's see what I can get out of this. I'm now shooting with a 60 of a second because I'm on 300 millimeter and uh, there's a little movement in the in the branches so uh, I think 60 of a second should be enough I use an f-stop at 8 like first of all to get the I found out this lens 150 to 600 is uh, sharper much sharper at 8 than it is at full open and but I still don't want to go too high because I want a slightly bit of blur in the background and that gives me a ISO on 800 so let's try lock the autofocus by pressing my F on button let's see yeah yeah and in the histogram it's very nice because I have still have room on the right it means that the highlight will not blow out and there's also a lot of details in the shadows. This image, I'll add some contrast to get the shapes coming more out of the picture. Yeah. Oh, listen to the birds. I've now changed the telephoto zoom with a 16, 35 millimeter and um, I'm in here in the beach forest and it's like it's like only the snow and these like vertical lines and it looks really really good. Just trying to make something very symmetric and uh, yeah let's come here have a look. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Might change back to the telephoto lens because I feel more comfortable with that one. Oh, look, I know it's very blurry, but like I have a hard time keeping this away, like free from the snow. So I hope you will forgive me for the poor quality. I'm just really trying to share this moment with you and I know that it's not perfect but I hope it's better than nothing. Oh I like it. Now comes the snow, so uh, let's get this camera on the back. Ooh, this is good. Ooh, yo, yo, yo. So much snow, I hope you can see something. <laughs> it's not easy to vlog in this kind of weather, but it's awesome. Look at this. Ooh, look at this. Like, even though I have the, the choice to go further down ISO, in a weather like this, where everything is so, like, it's so almost black and white, I like to raise the ISO, because I like to, like, I like this little bit of grain, and it, it gets like a, 
yeah, I like the effect. And I know that, you know, you can put that afterward with an effect and stuff like that. But I love when things come out of the camera just like as close as, for me, like as close, as perfect as possible. So I, for these images, I'm just going to like crop them a little bit probably and give them a little contrast just to get the more graphic uh, expression in them. But yeah. Let's see what we can get here. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. It's nice. I love this kind of weather. It's absolutely fantastic. It's like the whole scenery just, I mean, it just changes into black and white. <sighs> what a day. It's almost stopped snowing now, and I think it's time to get back into the forest and get my photo back. And then I wanna head home, put some fire in the fireplace, have a nice cup of coffee, yeah, and I'll call it a very, very good day. <sighs> yeah.